Well, hello everybody and welcome to part two of this Paputech video series where we're going to move on and start to construct what I hope is going to be my home theater PC for streaming via a VPN. So we looked at the various bits and pieces that I'm going to put in the build last time. This time I'm actually going to try and do computer build. So starting off, we've got the ASRock Z390M ITX case uh, motherboard and I've taken the stuff out already. We have the motherboard itself, which I'll take out in a minute. Oops. Inside the box, we had a CD. Well, I'm not going to have a CD player, so that's not going to be much use. Fortunately, I didn't see it at first, but it was there. We've got a little screw for the M2, because I'm going to be using a, an M2 SSD. So we've got the screw to attach that to the motherboard. Um, we've got the plate for attaching the, the motherboard the shield onto the, the case. This is a, a Wi-Fi motherboard, so there's a couple of antennas included. And then finally, we've got a couple of uh, connectors for SATA SSDs. Um, I won't be using these, uh, hopefully, because I'm just going to use the single M2 slot. So, useful to keep for spares, though. All right, so if I move everything out the way, let's get the motherboard and have a look at it. Okay, so here is the motherboard. So, as you can see, I've not installed anything yet. Um, so we're going to put in the Core i5 in here. Uh, and then I'm going to use the Noctua uh, fan to try and keep it cool. The M2 is going to go in here. If I wanted to, I could obviously plug in various additional drives. And I'm also looking for my CPU fan, which is up here. There's also the chassis fan, which I won't be installing. And then there are two slots for RAM, which we will get to as well in a little bit. All right, so just for interest, this is the box for Noctua when you open it up. This is what you get, along with a fairly simple instruction sheet. So I've got the thermal paste, I've got the fan, I've got some screws to attach it to the motherboard, and apparently I've also got an adapter cable, a low noise adapter. I don't know if that's going to be in focus or not. Anyway, low noise adapter, NARC7. So we'll give that a play as well. So if I remove all of that, that's what the cooler looks like now. It is true that the i5 came with a stock Intel cooler. I'm not sure whether or not that would have fitted in the case. I suspect not. But in any event, I haven't heard anything particularly good about those stock coolers. So I'm quite happy to move on to the Noctua. Just having had a look at them both, I think the Noctua looks to be of much better quality. All right, so phase one is going to be to install the i5 CPU. Uh, the manual says before you insert the pins into the socket, please check if the pop-up is in the socket. The pop-up cap is that, which apparently you need to keep if you need to return your motherboard for servicing. Uh, check if the CPU surface is unclean, if there are any bent pins in the socket. Do not force the CPU into the socket uh, if the situation is found. Unplug all power cables before installing CPU. Well, I guess that makes sense. All right, so in theory, we push down on this, pull it out to the side, it comes up, and I can see the pins look fine. There is a little triangle down at the bottom left, which is what I'm trying to match the, the chip up to. So somewhat carefully. I'm just gently placing it in, no problem. And then I lower 
the cap down the top and hopefully the cap is going to have the decency to pop off when I do that. Thank you. Okay, okay screw, force, and we are done, I hope. All right, so the next stage apparently is to attach uh, some thermal paste about the size of a pea in the middle, according to Noctua, and then to place down um, the cooler unit on top. I'm going to put it like that, because I think that will just give me enough room to put the, the cable in. Although I am going to put the extension on, so maybe I'll twist it one more, just try and keep the cables out the way. Um, once you push it down, if I turn this over, you can see that there are uh, four holes on the back and the screws for the cooler go in on the rear and then you screw it in from that side. All right, so let's get the thermal paste out. We've got the Nocto thermal paste that comes included with the cooler. Uh, I'm going to pull off the end and I can see the paste is there. I'm going to put the size about four or five millimeters wide a P just in the middle of the board. Too much is as bad as too little, apparently. So, let us see if that's about right. Then I'm going to take the cooler plate and pressing it down, lining it up with the holes. Let us see. Okay, so I can see the holes. First one, I'm just going to put them in a little way, get them all started, hopefully. Okay, it's in. Second one. Third. Oops. So as you can see, I'm just going around them one at a time, tightening them up. Tighten the screws until they stop, so it says. Do not over tighten. So, screwing them down, and I can feel them coming to a natural stop. Yep. 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 All right. Cooler attached. It says connect the fan to the motherboard, but depending on your CPU and the temperature inside the case, you may connect this supplied low noise adapter, technically referred to as an LNA, go figure, in order to further reduce the fan's operating noise. However, one has to be careful because you might get throttling. Not too concerned about that. So I'm simply going to connect this hopefully in, which it does. And I'm not going to connect it into the fan header yet, because I think if I do that, it's not going to make my life easy for the RAM. So I'll do that in a minute. All right, and problem number one is that now that I've put it in with the cable on this side, if I try and put my RAM in, as you can see, it's being blocked by the cable. So I'm just quickly going to undo this and rotate it through so that the cable doesn't block the, the RAM slot. All right, so as you can see, I've rotated the cable around so it's not obstructing the RAM. So now, if I unclick or unclip both the RAM slots, RAM slots, if I put it in, and then if I push down firmly, it should click in. Good. 
And I've got the second one, same thing. Push down firmly and it should click into place. All right. So now I have the RAM installed. I have the CPU installed. I have the CPU fan installed. I have the CPU low noise adapter. So next I will connect in the M2 slot the M2 memory. Right, so now I'm going to install my WD Blue 500 gigabyte uh, SATA, not NVMe uh, 2280 onto the motherboard. Fortunately, and I didn't see it at first, but there is a screw included with the, with the motherboard for this. So basically it should simply clip in, pardon me, I can't see because the camera's in the way. There we go. And it goes place backwards. You put it in normally at about a slight angle. And then hold it down carefully and try and get the screw in. All of which should be done without knocking over your camera. And again, it screws in until it stops. So now we have the SSD, we have the two sticks of 8GB RAM, we have the silent, hopefully, cooler on top, and the i5 CPU underneath. The motherboard is ready to go into the case. Right, so here is the Silverstone case that I'm going to use. You're looking at it from the front. It's got this Raven thing here that actually drops down and underneath you've got some USB and I presume uh, audio headphone type socket. So I'll leave that up for the moment. Now I've removed six screws to take the sides off. It's a bit of an unusual case compared to what I've used before. Basically there are two bits that come off. So one sleeve and then the second sleeve. So, this leaves me with the main section that we'll be working with. As I understand it and I figure my way through this, the power unit is going to go in here and the motherboard is going to go in here. If I was installing SSD drives, they would go into these drop and play here and if I turn over the case you can see that this is uh, where I would put my graphic card if I had a graphic card but I'm not going to be putting one on this build. So there is not an awful lot of space I must say. So I'm at the moment quite relieved that I haven't done anything particularly creative. In the box it comes with the normal screws and also an adapter to be able to move your, uh, connect your motherboard up to the graphic card on the other side of the case. Um, according to the manual it says that the first thing you should do is insert your power supply. All right, I know I'm jumping around so apologies but just a quick look. So this is the, the Corsair small factor SF450 that I'm going to use. It comes with a note saying silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode the fan will not spin, so fingers crossed the fan will, will not indeed spin. Uh, it's a modular unit, so it comes with all the cables. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm not going to need very many of them. Really I'm just looking to connect up the, the motherboard. So, first stage, let's put this into the case. All right, so you can see I've moved the cables out of the way. I have the, the Corsair. There are two ways that it can go, fan up or fan down. Not sure that it makes a huge amount of difference. The screws will allow it to align 
either way. Right, let's assume fan down for the moment. That looks like that would come. All right, so we're sort of copying the manual at the moment. It comes with bucket loads of screws, which is nice. Uh, so four screws to install it initially into. It's not the back of the case, is it? It's the, the side of the case, I suppose. Oh, a terrible camera angle for this, my apologies, but it's four screws, people. It's interesting, it doesn't stop when it's all the way in that one. That one does. That no, one not. All right, so if I turn it around, you can see what I've done. So it's now installed. The way this works is that this installs into here. And then when I put my cable in, my power supply actually connects at the other end of the case. So, ooh, yeah. all right, so we have the power supply connected. Okay, I stand corrected. It actually comes with an additional brace which goes here and actually does align up with the screws and keeps some of the cables out the way. So let's see if I can add. Oops, can't use my hand is in the way. Yeah, well, it's going to go in. So two screws to hold that, I guess. Stopping it from rattling around in the box isn't a bad thing. All right. All right fair effort to Silverstone. That went easier than expected. All right, so you can see being held on that side, being held on that side, four screws are holding it down at the bottom, and then the modular cables all connect in the side. I could have put an SSD in at the back as well, but I've not, so at the moment I'm hoping that the cabling may not be quite the nightmare I was thinking it was going to be. Next part before the motherboard goes in is to put in the IO shield, which I'll admit I am not exactly brilliant at, but let's see if we can just Clip this in smoothly and simply. So the IO shield needs to pop in like this. Clicking from the corners. There we go. All right, so the next stage is going to be to place the motherboard into the case and onto the shield and line it up with the, the screws. You can see one lining up, so ITX, well they are four screws, so I'm not exactly hunting for the places. There are not any alternatives to this. The screws are going in easily enough. Or just slightly offset, which I guess makes sense. It certainly looks as if there is plenty of room with this fan header. So, there we have the power unit and the motherboard installed. So now we will start to connect up various cables. All right, we've moved in a bit closer because now we're going to connect uh, the onboard headers and connectors. So I'm looking at the manual as I do this and there's a diagram on the manual. I'm going to connect all the various pins into the panel header slots. Uh, I've lined it up with the, the diagram in the manual because there's a dummy and a blank at the far end. The first one I'm going to do is a hard drive activity LED. Excuse me if that was my ear in the way. All right, next to that is the system power LED. You have to excuse me while I fiddle around with the camera out the way just for a minute. All right, there's just a final look at the, the connectors all, all lined up. 
So, next stage, the USB sockets on the front of the case. All right, so on the front case, there are also two USBs, the USB 3, so they both connect into the same place on the motherboard. So we've got USB 3 marked down here. There's only one way that this can go in. And click, done. All right, so the last one is the HD audio, which is here. And you can see that there's a connector clearly marked with HD audio. There is a blank. So again, it's not possible to put this in the wrong way. Although I'm sure that I can try. Okay. Just help it down. Okay. And then we'll connect the power up to the motherboard. Right, now there are two power units, uh, two power sockets from the motherboard to the, the power. The first is for the CPU, which is going to go in, in here. And the modular power unit comes very helpfully with a Type 4 connector, one end of which is marked CPU. So that clicks in. Okay, thud. Okay, and so lastly we have the ATX power connector, 24 pin from the motherboard. All right, sorry about that, my card filled up, but basically you can see that I've just plugged in the 24 volt power connector. Uh, it only goes in one way. So the last thing that I'm going to do, and I'll just show you quickly and then do it, but basically I'm going to connect these up to the power supply unit along the top, you can see it says 24 pin ATX. So that's where the big cable's going. And then down at the bottom, you can see I've got a, an eight pin hole for the CPU. So I'll connect those up now. All right, so you can see cabling wise, this is still a bit of a mess, but you can see the power supply unit on the right. You can see the motherboard on the left. The Intel chip is in place with the fan on top. 16 gig of RAM installed and 500 gig SSD M2 installed as well. Now I'm just going to time out and take this across and plug it in to see if it powers up before I do the final cable managing and put the top back on. All right, so it is a little dark, my apologies, but hopefully you can see the computer. I've now connected the mains power in, connected monitor, HDMI, keyboard and mouse, I'm turning on the mains and my keyboard came alive for a second, which is a good sign. The power button is in the bottom of the front of the case, which I cannot see from here. And we have power. At least we have a spinning fan, proper boot device. Press a key. All right, so we have power, good. Right, so I got the reboot with a proper uh, boot device on the, on the monitor. So I turned the computer on and off, hitting F2 to get into the BIOS. And as you can see, we've got the ASRock BIOS, uh, Z390M ITX, iCore i5-9400, processor speed 2900, 16 gigs. We're running the DDR for 2133 at the moment. I'll change that later. CPU fan one setting is on standard. Basically, it seems to be seeing everything that I wanted to do. All right, so as you can see, I've tidied up the cables a little bit. We have power, we have a connector, we have a computer. So the next video will be the actual setup of the software for the VPN. I hope you find this video of interest. If you have, please click like, and I will see you next time on Paputech.